morning folks hope you're all well only me again Sean from Happy Days Veg so I just wanted to highlight in a couple of small videos the the way I harvest and collect and distribute all my rainwater that I collect for watering all my vegetables and not just watering my vegetables I use it for uh, jet washing things down and uh, things like that as well so you know not all of this is going to be applicable to you but maybe just maybe you can pick up on some of these little ideas and make yourself a, a nice rainwater harvesting system because you'll be surprised how much water you need and you'll be able to alter some of these ideas to suit your own needs and if you've got any questions or any queries or if you need me help with anything just send me a message or a comment and I'll get back to you so without a further ado you find me here next to my two IBC containers now for those of you who don't know an IBC container is a big plastic tank on a pallet encased enclosed in a metal cage it's got a big massive tap on the outlet if you can see that tap there and it's got a big screw on lid on the top and I've got two of them here these are raised off the floor slightly higher the better because all this works on gravity yeah not electricity gravity so higher the better in an ideal world I'd love another one on there but it's a bit high to get one up there on my own but who knows so you can see over here this is the the corner of my shed water off half of the roof of the shed runs down and goes into the guttering at the back it goes through a long brush rough filter in the guttering and then it goes down through those two uh, I've got a thing to point hang on stay there I'll use this blue bendy point to see. let me just see what you can see because I don't know what you can see right The water comes down the guttering and it goes through this long, it's a metre long, uh, nearly 100mm diameter, big brush that keeps out all the leaves and everything. And then, here, I've got two, actually the antique or scientific uh, sieves. So the, the water goes through the two sieves and those two sieves take out nearly all the debris so you have to be careful you've got to make sure that that's clean and then the water drops through into this hopper box and then runs down into the back of this IBC tank now because the pipe is there I'm only my, I've only got the ability to to store uh, about 600 litres in this bottom tank and believe you me 600 litres goes nowhere when you're watering 600 litres because nowhere <clears throat> then the water in there fills up and when I want to transfer it from this tank to that tank I open this valve and I fill, fill up this bucket and inside this bucket there's an old sump pump and that pump pumps the water out of that container up and into this one so here we are I'll, I'll turn that on and then I'll, I'll switch the pump on The water is flowing there but it's been pumped at a high rate up this one inch pipe into this top tank.
And what I do is I do that process until this top tank starts to overflow and then I turn the pump off. So from the T-piece, coming off the top container up there, which you can see to the far left hand side, it's tied up down the top of the fence and it comes to this T-piece. And this T-piece was the very first T-piece I put in. And there you've got a tap with an outlet to fill up your watering can, a bucket, wash your hands, anything you like. Also, it comes to this T-piece here, which feeds my potato self, semi self watering system. So here we are at, at the, the, the business end of the potato containers, semi automatic watering system. You can see the T piece there where I was just standing. It comes down and it tees off into these five pipes. Now, take no notice of this, this. I've had to alter this this season, so this framework needs altering because this is too high. But I'll be standing, you turn the, uh, you turn the tap on, and the water runs down by gravity, pushes itself down the pipe, and what it's doing now is, I'm gonna turn it off though, because I don't need to water it. What it does, the water pushes itself down the pipe, hits the, the dead end, works its way back and pushes all the air out of the pipe. You can hear it change sound. And that is the way, I've, you've seen the videos, this is the way I can water 90 containers of potatoes in 10 minutes. I just open that tap, leave it on for two minutes, close it. Open that tap, leave that running for two minutes, close it so on so on and so on until i've done all five rows yeah this is a great setup and as i say again this works all by gravity so let me take you further down further down the rainwater harvesting pipeline right so you can see where i was just crouching down just up there just up there somewhere you can see the corner of the potato watering system there. That's where I was just crouching down. So that blue pipe carries on all the way down the fence. And here was a secondary tea piece, sorry, a secondary uh, garden tap that I put in when this system was first put in. Things have, things have changed and things have progressed and things have been improved since then. It needs altering, but for what, for all intensive purposes, it can stay as it is. So I've also got this IBC tank here, which you can see is filled up to there at the moment. This was a lot lower. So I've stood this on an extra two blocks to give me some height so I can get a, a, a watering can under, or I was contemplating just putting like a little, a little sink there, because this is my polytunnels there and I'm always getting dirty and you're always needing a bit of water. So. This hose here is too long, it needs shortening, but this hose, if I open this tap, it'll take a second. Oh, stay there, I'll pull the old out, I'll pull the, yeah. It's very slow. But believe it or not, that IPC tank now is slowly but surely filling itself up with water. But I don't need to worry about it filling it up because it, it, I've got it there. And just to show you, da, 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 where's the numbers? There is a thousand litres, so let's call it 900 litres in there, right? Can you see the side of that? So this is the front of the tank and I've, 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 I already had the, the, uh, the cap with the thread in, but I bought this tap and I've put on a piece of, people don't normally use this, this is 
five eight garden hose yeah 50 just over 15 mil this is a got a bigger bore so this is good for uh Look at that, you'd you, you think you was connected to the mains. This is good for filling up your watering cans or your buckets. So, just to your left hand side there, out of shot is the IBC tank raised up that I've just showed you with 900 litres of watering. So the blue pipe comes down the fence along with a, 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 an armoured cable which puts power into the polytunnel. But I've got another T piece here. And what I did, not last year, the year before I think it was, I dug down, dug a trench, and I buried this pipe and the, uh, another piece of the pipe to put the cable in underground to go into the polytunnel. So that's where that goes. And then this carries on all the way down the fence to the bottom. I don't know how, look, uh, how this is going to look on the camera, but I'm a bit far away because I just wanted to show you the perspective and the position of where we are. So here is my sweet corn bed that I planted the other day. So I've got the six three-in-one IBC containers, raised veg beds there. And you can see the blue pipe coming down from where that IBC container is. And it comes to this tap here. And this tap has got a hose on. And that hose just connects onto the hoses going into the IBC containers. So when I connect that hose onto there and turn all the taps on, the water, believe it or not, the gravity is great enough to push the water down the pipe up and into the top of these IBC containers. Now let me show you those because you won't believe me. Now hopefully you can hear me and it's not too windy, but I'm sorry about that if it's too windy. You can see down there where the blue pipe comes from and you can see my two IBC containers. Now this shirt, I've took them down and I've lifted them up and I've put them on three extra pallets to make it higher. The higher you can get your water storage, the further and longer you can run it for gravity. That's the secret, the height. So I've got two here and two on that side. But because I've raised the height, I can't collect the water off the side of my guttering off the polytunnel so I'm going to have two one here and one there two water containers open topped so I can use my new water butt pump to pump the water out of there into these I don't tell you for why this is a big polytunnel and you believe me you only need a little bit of rain to hit the top of that and the amount of rainwater you can you can harvest is phenomenal so i've moved round the back of the polytunnel you can just see down there you can just see the the edge of those other two ibc containers and now we're standing here at more or less the identical setup but because this everything is on a slope these are roughly at the same height, even though I've only put these on two pallets. Where that's sitting on four pallets, this is only sitting on two pallets. And I've got this cupboard. Now, some of you will know the, about this cupboard. It was at low level before, but it's all changed. This is my secret weapon. This is my secret weapon. Now, because I had to change everything, I haven't reconnected the power point yet. I've got a waterproof plug socket there. But, go back and search my videos for this hose lock jet pump, yeah? <coughs> now, this is the bee's knees. This setup is the bee's knees. But I'm not gonna go into the, I'm not gonna talk about this pump, but I'm gonna tell you what this pump does for me. The pump, sucks the water through that hose out of the bottom of this or nearly from the bottom of that uh, bottom IBC container. It has got its own built-in uh, 
filter and it's got a built-in non-return valve so the water can't siphon itself back into the tank. Now, the, when I turn it on, the outlet of the pump is there. And just let me see if you can see. Yeah. And if you see here, I've got a, a hose reel with a 25 metre half inch hose on. And for my watering, all my raised beds and my carrots, this is my weapon of choice because I've got good reach over all the beds. It's adjustable in angle, adjustable type of head, and it's got that, it's got that locking tricker mechanism that I discussed in a previous video with the adjustable uh, setting there. This is brilliant, brilliant. So I can reel off that hose and I can water all my raised, all my raised beds up there. Fantastic. All I've got to do is reinstate the power. Also, as you'll see in a couple of videos ago when I was doing these my three-in-one IBC raised veg beds, which, by the way, was in last month's uh, Grow Your Own magazine. I need to swap this connector for one of these. Yeah. Now, that one, last year, I had to sacrifice and break the valve out because I was desperate for a fitting. Strange, because they cost a lot of money. But I've ordered another one. And I'm, I'm using a, a, an aqua stop one on there. And I'll tell you for why. I can turn this pump on. And because I've fitted a pressure switch on this pump, this pump will fill the hose up and then turn itself off. And then once I, once I connect this hose, in fact, I'll give it a demonstration. Let's pull some hose off. Yeah. And let me turn the camera around. Bear with me one second. So now I can connect that hose pipe straight onto there. Absolutely fantastic. And if you go back a couple of videos ago, you'll see me doing these containers and showing you how I've made the the, the pipe inside full of holes to water the, uh, the the vegetable bed without getting out your watering can or without being able to take the lid or the, the top of the cage off. So that is how I'll water all my six. I've got six this year and I'm hoping to have another six for next year if these six work out well. And then when you're finished, You just roll up the hose, sweet as a nut, and clip it on. Perfect. So now, we're actually in the polytunnel at the far, this is the back doors, there's the front doors, this is the far left hand corner, next to me, one of my grapevines. Here is uh, a 210 litre water butt. And in the top of that water butt, there is a float valve like you get in an in a old fashioned toilet system or a cold water tank. You need the ones that are designed for low pressure. Yep, yeah? because there's two types, low and high pressure. You, you just want the ones for low pressure. So I've got a hose that comes from the top IBC container out there. And it comes to a, 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 y, a y shaped T piece. So the water comes from that top IBC container down the hose to that connection and it will fill that container up with water until the float valve closes and stops the flow. The other side of that connection goes onto, oh, 
I've, I've done my shouldering, by the way, folks. It hurts to put the hose pipe on. This is, let me, let me show you something. This is the problem with buying cheap Chinese foreign crap hose pipe fittings, yeah? They're crap. That's why I've, I've, I bought a load of new ones. I'm changing all these for the top of the range, proper ones, right? So I'm not even gonna put that on there. But that connection goes on there. And out the and out the bottom of this tank this hose goes onto this. Now this fitting is the same as that one there. And in there is identical. There's a little float valve. Yeah. So when the hose is on there and the water's flowing freely, when the float valve lifts up to the desired measurement, which is roughly halfway, it closes the water off. Also, this goes, I don't know whether you can see. Let me, let me just check the camera. Let me see what you can see. Let me just alter the camera slightly, boys and girls. Sorry about that. So we got this float valve that's served from this tank. You got another float valve on and that goes into the end of my self watering system. And I'll show you how that works when I get further up there. Now I've got the identical setup behind you over there. Yep. So let's just go through that again. The water comes from the top IBC container through a hose onto there. But there's a, a float valve on there, which when that container fills up with water, it automatically stops the flow. I've also got a little float valve in there. So when that's full of water to the desired height, to the desired level, it automatically stops. And I've got the same system there. That means I've got a thousand litres of water that on this side of the polytunnel will water these uh, 20 or so containers of strawberries without me touching them from the bottom. So the strawberries suck up the water from underneath. And one, two, three, 10, 20, 30, 30, one, three, two, three, three. I've got 35 containers on this half of my self-watering system, which when the water's in there and, it, and this, this tap's turned on, those plants, peppers, melons, cucumbers, tomato, courgettes, they'll all water themselves on their own again. Which means all I have to worry about is making sure that there's enough water in that tank. Yep. Yeah, to do the job and that tank is automatically filled by just opening the tap and connecting the hose from a rainwater harvesting up by the shed now over the back there i've got another 20 or so containers of strawberries behind you and another 20 uh, 20 containers on that side of the self-watering system and that waters itself uh, it waters itself on its own as well. So I'd hardly have to do any watering in here, yeah? Anything that's in a few pots up there, yes. Yes, I do water the grapevines, even though the grapevines go into the ground, I water the grapevines. But all of this is watered automatically. I don't have to worry about it. And here's the good thing. I put the organic plant feed, vegetable plant feed, in these containers as a weak solution. So the plants are getting a weak feed constantly. Yeah. Now, because the water can't, the water with the feeding can't come from there to there, this is fed directly from the IBC. Here, I've got a secret little hatch where I can put, the, put a, a watering can full of diluted feed in there, which is what I've been doing. 
to feed the strawberries. And look at all the look at all the strawberries coming on there already. And what type of strawberries are these, Sean? These are these strawberries are called elegant. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. I can always see I can already see six strawberries on there. So that is our water, this self-watering system. But I'll take it up to the end and I'll show you exactly how it works. Right, so this is gonna work. So can you see that hole there, Sean? Yes. I've got a four inch underground drainage pipe that is sitting on a wooden frame, more or less level, near as damn it. And I've drilled in a, a, a three inch hole in the top. And then, I've got tw some 20 litre containers. Look at that. The temperature's risen and the fans have just come on, so I'm gonna to have to talk a bit louder. Sorry about the fan noise. That The fans are on, getting rid of some of the hot air because it's warming up in this polytunnel. I've cut the same size hole in the bottom of the container. Then, to stop the compost falling through the holes of the container, I just cut a little donut shaped piece of plastic out of an old compost bag and place that over the hole. Then, I've got a little plastic container with slots in, and that fits in a cloth bag. Yeah, I buy these cloth bags from a hydroponic suppliers. You push the, you push the bag, through the bottom of the container and that's what it looks like inside you fill the bottom up with your growing medium fill it up and then you push it in there like so you fill it up and you plant your plants now when the water in that pipe fills up it it covers the bottom two inches of that container so that pot, whatever's in that container then, has got the ability, the soil uses capillary action to, to draw the water up and whatever you've planted in there, the roots can go down and they can get the water from the bottom, which is where you want the water to come from. Then that way you get a nice good root grow, uh, root ball, yeah? That way you can just mulch the top and you don't have to bother watering your plants. And then when all these plants suck out the water the float valve goes down and lets in more water so it does it automatically works perfectly so i've got 20 foot of the same type of pipe here and i've used the same setup for my strawberries yep the water goes halfway up the strawberry can suck the water from the bottom in fact the top of that is damp yeah these are called Colossus strawberries and I bought these last year and not one of them produced a flower or a strawberry. Now this plant, look how healthy that is. That is one of last year's runners and it's already got those flowers there. Look at all the, oh there's strawberries there, strawberries there. Strawberries all over the place. So it's living proof that this system does work. You can see down there, the first water pot on the far left. And if you look down there, you can see the other water butt there. But all this self-watering system is going to be planted up early next week. I'm sorry about the noise of the fan, but the temperature's risen. The thermostat's turned the fan on, so now I've got a fan at low level, sucking in cooler air at the bottom, pushing it down the polytunnel, and an identical fan blowing air out the top, far right-hand corner explain that at high level but I've got this water butt connected to this tap here and this tap comes from the pipe underground that I showed you earlier yeah I've got a hose pipe in here that I connect to the one side of there and this goes into there and in there there's another float valve so when that fills up automatically because that's always left on 
when because I use this one the most really I use this one the most when I'm doing my seeds and my uh, tomato plants and you know everything else I'm doing so I use I fill my watering can up here and when the level drops it fills itself back up and the and the the ball the, the uh, ball cock the isolation valve lifts up and turns the water off and then just one other thing you need to do make sure you keep a lid on top of your uh, water butts it just keeps all the nasties out helps prevent algae and keeps all the uh, uh, water larvae and the uh, mosquitoes out so let's go outside where we don't have to hear these vans and we'll have a little round up once again I just want to apologize if the sound of the wind is uh, causing a problem on this video I've just I just use my phone to do my recordings so we're back to where we started my shed roof is the source of the rainwater collection and everything runs on gravity I can fill I can fill all of those containers I can water 90 containers of potatoes I can fill up my hose pipes I can wash my hands I can use the jet wash all my uh, there's 55 containers there's 55 containers on my self watering system which water themselves fantastic and then I've I think I've got 10, 20, 30, 40. Just over 40 strawberry plants hanging there from the ceiling. They water themselves. And the beauty of this system is you can put the liquid organic feed into the water system and you can give them a little bit of feed constantly. Yeah, so instead of instead of every week or two weeks, you bombard your flowers with a load of load of feed and your flowers go, oh my god, what's happening here? Yeah. You just you're just giving it them intravenously and they don't even know and I personally think it's a fantastic setup so I know what you're saying I can hear you shouting Sean we haven't got all these IBC containers we haven't got all this pipe you know I haven't got things at such a high level because admittedly everything everything slopes downhill which is the reason why I've done this system, yeah? <clears throat> Some people have, will have a bigger system, yeah? If you go over to see Tony O'Neill at Simplified Garden, Gardening, <clears throat> he's got, <clears throat> he's got, I think he's got minimum 7,000 litres of water, yeah? Now, when all my systems for I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, six. Yeah, when everything's full, because I can't fill all my containers up to the brim uh, for whatever reason, <clears throat> I've got about 7,000 litres. <clears throat> but if you go, go over to see Tony, his allotment plot, wherever it is, I don't know, I'd like to go and have a look one of the days when I'm passing, is relatively flat or where these water containers are are relatively flat <clears throat> but with the help of a little uh, water butt pump you can put you don't have to have these massive IBCs but the secret is if you're gonna use a pump fine if you if you can go to the lengths of having a pump with a big hose pipe that's fine, you can use it and put it in any water pump. But if you want to use gravity, or you want to use the, the ability of using gravity to feed a, a slow drip system, if you can get your water butt higher up, yeah? So you could have one water butt at the bottom on, sitting on a couple of pallets, build a frame out of a couple of more pallets and sit another one on top, or two on top, or three on top, or whatever. The higher you can get your water, the further and more powerful, you can use the flow of gravity to push the water down your hose pipe to where you need it. So that's the real 
moral of the story, apart from the fact you should be collecting as much rainwater, harvesting as much rainwater as you can, yeah? Because, I'll give you a for example, I'm on my own property here, but Adele had a text, uh, when was it? Two weekends ago, I think it was, and it was off the Welsh water, and it's saying that there's a burst water mine somewhere down the down the line somewhere and it'll affect our water supply and our water pressure that can happen anytime any place anywhere not only that if we have a really hot summer on all the allotments they'll turn the taps off they'll turn the water supply off because there'll be a hose pipe ban yeah and then what you do you spend all this time sowing your seeds some of those seeds and plants in there are sown in january and now we're in we're in may so you've gone to all that expense and time and effort and care and all that attention growing your seedlings and your plants we're finally starting to plant them out because the last frosts have gone but they haven't gone because you guys up north you've just had a frost and then you have a hose pipe ban and then you can't you can't water your vegetable plants because you've got no water stored anywhere yeah and you need a lot of water so the moral of the story is this store as much rainwater as you can yeah and if you're short of space instead of putting water butts here there and everywhere they need to be stacked on top of each other easier said excuse me easier said than done i know but it's not within the realms of impossibility especially using pallets but if you can get your hands and you've got the space for a couple of these IBC containers on your allotment, oh, stand the bottom one on three or four pallets, minimum three pallets, minimum, so you can get a, a watering can underneath. Put one on top, wrap it in black plastic polythene to keep the algae out, and you'll have 2,000 litres of water there. So while everybody else is struggling, you'll have your water, but be careful because people will steal your water. They will steal your water. I've seen it done, I've heard it done, and I know people who have had it done. So, so be careful. But apart from that, I hope you enjoy this video. And if there's any information you want me to tell you about, or you've got any questions or queries, or you've got any ideas that you want to run past me, just in case I can help you out in any idea. Because I love this kind of, I love this kind of setup. Uh, just drop me a message. And on that note, it is time for a cup of tea and some poached eggs on toast. I'll see you guys later. Happy days.